Ken Bowersox, thanks for being with us once again on This Week in Space. You've had a little bit of time to put a little hindsight into the picture. Uh, what, as you look back on it, what was really good? What was uh, something you want to look at? What are the issues you want to look at for the next launch? Well, the, the good part of the first flight of Falcon 9 was that we made it into orbit and we made it into our targeted orbit. Um, the, the things that we observed that we'd like to do better for the next flight, uh, we'd like to avoid the abort uh, that we had before the launch. Uh, launches to space station will require launches pretty much on time. Um, so we'll want to minimize the probability of, of a, an abort that uh, isn't required. We, of course, in any case, uh, if there is a real problem with the engines, we, we will want that aboard. It's much more important to keep the vehicle on the ground and fix it than to try and launch it into space when it's not ready. Um, the next thing, we saw a little bit of a roll of the rocket at liftoff. Um, we'd like to minimize that, so we'll be looking at ways to, to set up our, our engines to minimize the torques on the rocket at, at liftoff. Um, we had a, a roll in second stage flight. Uh, it didn't affect the accuracy of the final orbit, but um, there's potential that if it was worse than it was on this flight, it, it could end up affecting the orbit accuracy or even uh, possibly prevent getting into orbit. So we'll, we'll want to work on that, and we've got a team looking at ways to uh, keep that from happening on the next flight. Um, and then uh, the recovery of our first stage. Um, that's something that we've wanted to do for a long time. Uh, we weren't able to do it on this flight, and we'll be taking a look at ways to possibly modify the first stage to give it a better chance of uh, making it through the extreme forces and, and heating uh, of, of entry uh, after shutting off up at Mach 10 uh, to give it a, a better chance of being recovered. Or we'll decide that it's uh, just too hard and, uh, and, and take the parachutes off and save some weight, get a little extra performance. Um, but, but we'll be working that issue as well. Just starting with that first stage issue, do, did it break up as best you know? Uh, as far as we know, yeah, it broke up. We, we found some pieces, which was, uh, we've been trying to do recovery since the first flight of Falcon 1, but the, there's not a lot of uh, additional margin on the vehicle to do that recovery. You know, the safety factors are really low uh, and the analysis is pretty difficult. So uh, th this was actually the first time that we found any um, parts of the rocket. Let's talk ab about that uh, abort right before um, T minus zero. Uh, couple things. First of all, do you understand pretty well what happened? And uh, I, I was kind of surprised at how quickly you were able to turn things around. Of course, it wouldn't have been quick enough, as you point out, for that narrow space station launch window. But nonetheless, you were able to save the day, so to speak. Tell us a little bit about what was going on. Yeah, it really was fantastic for the team to be able to recycle so quickly. Uh, since the engineers who work the engines also participate in the testing of the engines, um, they had seen this particular signature before, uh, knew exactly what to do, quickly made a very small change to the parameters in the software for one of the engines. Um, we sent uh, that software back to our facility in Hawthorne uh, so that it could be tested on our avionics test equipment. Um, it's what we call our uh, high hardware in the loop uh, test lab. Uh, and it, it, the test passed, shipped uh, the software back to the Cape, we loaded it on the vehicle, and uh, were able to launch. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive, uh, Turner. It had to give you a lot of confidence. Tell us a little bit about the role. Uh, you think that's going to be a big deal and a hard one to solve? Uh, no, I, I don't think that's going to be a, a real tough one. Uh, now, uh, what's tough is to get it exactly right every time. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at the uh, test of the second, uh, second flight vehicle, the first stage, and McGregor to see if there's some extra data that can help us pin down the, the twisting force on the vehicle right before it lifts off for this uh, particular uh, stage and, and, and try to set up the engines to counter that torque before it lifts off the pad. But what causes it is the um, there's a little bit of a swirl from the exhaust of the engines, and then all of the exhaust from the gas generators that spin the turbo pumps uh, is angled a little bit. So that just puts a, a twist right at the, the start of liftoff, and it, it takes a little while for the engines to, to gimbal and, uh, and, and counteract the roll. So um, let's put this all in perspective. You know, uh, going into this, it was, the stakes for this first launch were unreasonably high. I think everybody would agree, right? Uh, each side putting probably too much into this one particular test. Try to give me a sense of what truly was accomplished in that first flight. 
Well, um, the, the thing I tell people is we could have accomplished almost as much technically even if we hadn't made it into orbit. Um, you, you know, we, we didn't have um, a, a, a cargo payload on this flight. Um, it was a, a just we we're trying to get some aerodynamic data um, with a dragon shape on the tip of the rocket. So we could have gotten most of our major objectives without getting into orbit. But it made it extra sweet to, to get into orbit. Uh, it, it helped quite a lot of criticism against SpaceX, I think, uh, to, to show that we could get a flight off on the first try. But, you know, we could have problems down the road. We don't want to get cocky. Um, rocketry is a, a tough business. Um, and what we want to do on every flight is learn as much as we can so that we can maximize the, the chances of success on the next flight. Overconfidence can get you in real trouble in this racket, that's for sure. That's right. Now, let's talk about you. Would you, would you strap yourself to a Falcon 9? Well, uh, not yet. The, the, the first Falcon 9, uh, th that was a, a test rocket, um, and there, there's a lot of improvements we want to make before we put people on the rockets. We'll be looking at a Block 2 version of our Falcon 9 uh, before we'd be ready to, to fly crews on board a Dragon. Um, the, the Block 2 would have upgraded engines. It'll have uh, improved engine-out capability and um, uh, improved avionics redundancy eventually. But you will be. You will be the first to fly, you think? Uh, you know, Elon has to decide that, uh, the founder of our company. No, nobody's been designated to fly, but I'd love to. I suspect you'll be. I call he, here and he keeps smiling. You know, he, he's not committing to anything yet. He might want to go with you. Let's, uh, uh, a final thought here. Uh, you know, you, you've sat on both sides, if you will, of the, of the space business as a, as a NASA astronaut and now on the uh, commercial crew side of things, if you will. Uh, see, you've seen... And you've got this whole debate over what's going to happen in space next is really becoming extremely poisonous. I'm curious if you have some thoughts, if, if you've thought of a way there can be a middle ground uh, to, to get this out of this um, more heat than light uh, poisonous debate. Uh, yeah, well, at first, I just want to agree with you. I think uh, fighting is uh, over, over what path we should take forward uh, with space exploration is not helping us right now. We need to uh, work together to find a middle ground uh, and, and move forward. Um, what I would like to see is uh, a place for commercial operators like SpaceX to, uh, to participate uh, in exploration, uh, which I, I think will be part of any plan forward. Um, and I'd also like to see that the folks at NASA and, uh, and, and other contractor organizations out there, uh, you know, the Lockheeds, the Boeings, I'd like to see them be able to use some of the methods that, that we use at SpaceX. Uh, I'd like to see folks be dedicated to, to lowering cost and, uh, and improving access into orbit. Uh, I think if we can uh, have that sort of focus in any program forward, I think it's going to be good for all of us. And, and, and that's why I'm at SpaceX is whether we're successful or not, I, I hope we're putting pressure on the rest of the team uh, out there, the rest of the big, the big exploration team uh, to be more cost-effective uh, in everything they try to do. All right, I think you've succeeded on that front for sure. Ken Bowersox with SpaceX, thanks for your time. All right, Miles, great talking with you. Likewise.